we shall not walk in darkness. Now, as some of y'all seen my cousin on, on a recent cartoon, uh, you may not know what that cartoon is, but you know, The Rock is, is my cousin. I'm going to claim him as, as my cousin. You, know, you may not see the resemblance, but every time I look in the mirror, even at my mother's house with that, that mirror right there, I'm like, you know what? I, I see you, buddy. I, I see you right there. I see The Rock, and then, so you know, if you want to call me The Pebble, I'm okay with that uh, because I'm not quite at rock status yet. But, but, but one of my favorite new cartoons, because it represents my peoples, is, uh, is Moana. You know, uh, have any of y'all seen Moana? Any, anyone? I mean, it, wasn't it like a, a biologic or, you know, it was like a, a, one of those, like, you know, living documentaries of, of all Asian Pacific Islanders? I know you love that movie. You had to love the movie because if I love the movie, then you had to love the movie as well. But in the middle of that movie, all of a sudden there's this girl and she will, you know, win the wind and the waves and you know, she's calling. And so, you know, she wanted to get out on the sea. So I, I met about 11 years ago, I met an aunt who was like a little Moana. Um, because what she would do is, is that she would get on an outrigger canoe with a couple of other Asian Pacific Islanders and they would go and they travel on an outrigger canoe, kind of like the one similar that you see on the screen. They get on this outrigger canoe and when I saw her, I mean she was like native, like 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 for real, for real Hawaiian. You know, I'm like a half breed, but she's like, you know, straight out of the ocean kind of Hawaiian. And, and you know, she had like four teeth. Two like here and then two up here. Nothing in the middle. Um, she was she was she was a, a, a strong woman. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the best description of my auntie. Um, but you know, she 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 was what you would picture a toothless Hawaiian woman to look like. Uh, and so all of a sudden, that she would tell us these stories. Uh, how about they would get on this outrigger canoe and they'd go from Hawaii to Fiji, be out on the ocean a couple months, they'd have to collect rainwater, they'd go fishing, you know, I mean, she was out there in the middle of the ocean, in the middle of stormy weather, in the middle of the sun beating down on them, in the middle of all of this kind of, you know, craziness for months, and they're just on a canoe, about seven or eight of them are on a canoe going from Hawaii all the way to Fiji to trace back the, the lineage of where they came from. So we began to ask her questions about these experiences, about these travels that she would have, and this is what she would tell us, is that the way that they would not lose course, the way that they'd make sure that they'd get there in a proper manner, the way that they would make sure that they would know where they are in the middle of the ocean, is that they would look up and they could be able to follow the lights. So she began to say, well, this star is here, and this is here, and at this certain time of the year, this is there. And so she could tell me everything. Why? Because the stars, the light, helped her to navigate through the, the winds and the waves and the storms and everything that was calling her out to the ocean. But at nighttime, she could follow the light. During the day, she had the sun to light her way as well, and she knew exactly where she needed to be out in the middle of the ocean because she followed the light. For some of you today... It is stormy, stormy weather. For some of you today, it doesn't feel as though what, that, that I'm really living in the life, the fullness of life that it seems like I ought to have. For some of you, you have lost your way. You have gone to places that you never wanted to go. You can't figure out how to get back on course. It just seems as though there's a tidal wave of emotions and stuff that is going on in your life. And it just seems as though you're one moment away from capsizing and going into the utter darkness of despair and depression and loneliness and hopelessness. And you just seem as though your life is rocking one way to the other. And I encourage you today in the same words that my Hawaiian auntie told me then, that she followed the lights and the light led her path. And friends, today Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And he who follows me no longer needs to walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I got a stranger, I got a stronger, God, you are higher than any other. I got a healer, awesome power, I got, I got. Welcome to Westside Emmanuel Baptist Church, the church that loves God and loves people. We're in the heart of Bogalusa with Bogalusa on our heart. We look forward to you joining us in person sometime soon as we worship the Lord together.
tell me this morning what this is right here? You know what it is? A light. Look how bright it's shining right now. Isn't this amazing? Hey, Bryce, you want to like come over on this side for me because I, I want to see y'all smiling faces because y'all are going to have to help me with this. All right, so it is a light and it's shining really brightly right now. Yes or no? It is? Well, well, well look how bright it is. Watch. One, two, three. Psh. No? Well, what's wrong with it? It's, it's not plugged in. All right, do you know how to use electricity? All right, I'm going to give you this plug. Let's see what happens. All right, watch this, watch this, watch this. You ready? Ooh. Is that good? What do I have to do to turn it on? What do you think? Turn it on. Turn it on. You ready? Oh. Ooh. Now watch this. Ooh. You want to do it again? Try it. Ooh. Is that great? Now look, the Bible says that you are the salt of the earth and you are actually the light of the world. But how did, how, why did it not work to begin with? Because it wasn't what? It wasn't plugged in. And so the only reason why the light will work is if it is actually plugged in. And then when it's plugged in, then you can turn it on and it's like, it's really bright, right? So guess what that means? If you want to be the light of the world for Jesus, guess what you have to be? Plugged in, exactly. Like, we, yeah. These kids know stuff, all right? And so the only way that you can let your light shine is if you're plugged in, not to the electrical source, but if you're plugged into Jesus, okay? And so this morning, I want to make sure that each of you are plugged into Jesus, that you know exactly who he is. And I think you guys are going to sing a song for us this morning. Am I right? Just shake your hand like this. Okay, and I think the song is going to sing something like This Little Light of Mine. Any, any of you adults remember that song? This little line of mine. Alright, so you guys have to help them with that. So why don't y'all head that way? Alright, follow Lake and Bryson. You go that way. And then I think Miss Stevie will go that way. And Brother Ronald will go that way. Now I'm gonna go stand. I'm gonna stand in front of the mic. You'll sound a lot better over there instead of by me.
middle of Kentucky. And it was dark. And it was cold. And it was damp. It was about 56 degrees. On the outside, it could have been 95 on that day in Kentucky. And on the outside, the sun was shining brightly. But as we took one step into this huge mammoth opening, and then we did one step after the other. And as we began to traverse down this little pathway, the further we got in, the, the darker it got. It was Mammoth Cave. Any other, ever, has anyone ever been to Mammoth Cave? Uh, if you've been to Mammoth Cave or any kind of cave, you know just how immense it is. And as you get further and further, some of you have gone to the mountains and you've been to like, you know, different ruby falls or places like that. But as you get deeper and deeper into the cave, all of a sudden the rails are in front of you. And the tour guide says, I want you to hold on for a moment. Turn all of your cell phones off. Turn anything that will give light off. And, and as they turn everything off, all of a sudden the, the artificial lights that are shining against the stalactites and the stalagmites throughout this cave, they turn it all off and it is absolute darkness. You cannot even see your hand in front of your face. You can't see the people that are rustling nearby. You can't see anything because it is absolute darkness. Anybody ever been there before in, in absolute darkness? It is, it is quite an eerie, amazing feeling at the same time when you go and you're in a place and you cannot see a thing. You can't feel your way around. You can't move because you don't know exactly where you are or where you are heading. There is confusion. There is darkness. There is nothing around you. It just seems like a blanket of night has fallen around you. And that is, for many of you, a clear description of your life. There once was a light that shined. There once was clarity. There once was no confusion. But each step that you've gotten further into the cave of your darkness, and each step that you've taken into more confusion and frustration and uncertainty, it just seems as though the lights have been turned off, and now there's just darkness around you. And so we turn to the second I am in the book of John, Last week we looked at Jesus says, I am the bread of life, and he who comes to me shall never be hungry or never thirst. And now we begin in John chapter 8, and it's the context of a woman caught in the middle of adultery. Uh, we, we looked at her a couple weeks ago, so I won't uh, go over her whole story, but if you remember, she was caught in the act of adultery. She was thrown before Jesus. They were about to stone her to death, but all of a sudden Jesus began to write in the sand. He, he stooped down. It's on YouTube if you haven't seen that message. She stooped down, and as he stooped down, he began to look for all those who condemned her, every one of them who was not able to cast the first stone because of their sin. What do they do? From the oldest to the youngest, they, they walked away. And it's just her and Jesus at the end. And so in, Matthew, in John chapter 8, we pick up this story. John chapter 8, verse 12. When you find that in your Bible, would you stand with me? In the middle of whatever darkest confusion, no matter how hopeless it seems, no matter how many lights have been turned out in your life, John chapter 8, verse 12 begins with these words. Then Jesus spoke to them again. This is right after the story of the woman caught in adultery. And he says, and he looks at them, looks at this woman and says, I am the light of the world, and who you follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Father, this morning we just pray that you would, you would bring light into our world. That, Father God, in the middle of times of confusion or frustration or just darkness where we just cannot even see what is right in front of us, that you would turn the light on, that you would help us to see clearly. Most of all, that we could see Jesus, the light of the world, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And as we began to think about the Psalms for this morning, I told Brother Wade, look, you know, light is going to be our theme. It's going to be our idea. And so I was thinking about Psalms, you know, and some of you may date each other, but this may have nothing to do with, with church. But one of the first songs that popped in my mind for some strange reason, it's probably like a 70s tune. It's this, and Connie, I'm sure you know this song as well. Yeah, I know. But Brother Kenny already said, you know, old people, when he looked at me, and so I might as well, you know, let's spread the, the wealth this morning. But it's some song that says, you light up. My, oh, y'all are as old as I am. Okay, so the other thing y'all know that that's all right. Uh, Zach's looking at me like, oh, I don't know, you know, if it ain't Conway and stuff, I don't even got it. Uh, but, but, you know, some of you remember that whole idea of, you know, you light up my life. And Jesus here says, I am the light of the world. And if you follow me, if you come after me, you will no longer 
walk in darkness. And so I began to think, you know what, well, what does light do? Now, now we know the speed of light, you know, and we know how fast that is. We know all the prisms and the spectrum of light, you know, all those kind of things. But what does light do this morning? And very plainly, light disperses darkness. It was amazing in this cave where all of a sudden it was absolute darkness, but one little light, one little flashlight, one little cell phone, all of a sudden that turned on. That little light in the middle of all this cave of darkness, that little light turned everything as bright as could be. And so whenever light steps in, light disperses the darkness. That is what happened for this woman who was caught in sin in John chapter 8. All of a sudden, she had been in sin of making bad decisions, making bad choices. She's caught in the middle of adultery, and they throw her before. And when Jesus began to shine the light on her sin, all of a sudden, the darkness had to flee, and she was standing right before Jesus. Also, the light is first the darkest and those who were willing to stone this woman to death. When all of a sudden, Jesus says, let him who has the first, who, let him who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. What happened? All of a sudden, they, they no longer could throw that stone because the light shined into, into their, their darkness. Here's the problem, though. Many of us today, we really like and enjoy walking in darkness. You say, I'm not really sure now. I'm afraid of the dark. I've got a nightlight in every room in my house. I don't really like being in the darkness. If, there is, if I have to walk through the church at nighttime, I guarantee you, it may cost us four extra dollars on our light bill, but I'm turning some lights on. I ain't walking through this church at night with all the lights off. I just ain't going to do it. Well, well, some of us, however, we, we actually enjoy, we like to walk in darkness. You say, not me, brother. Well, what about when it comes to, comes to sins in your life? How enjoyable are those things that, that you know Jesus was not wanting me to do this, and this is not what his plan is for my life, but we enjoy walking in that darkness, so we continue to do so. We stumble along the way, we find ourselves in places that we never wanted to go, but we begin to walk in, in darkness, in the hindrances and the chains of our life. John, John chapter 3, you may remember verse 16, for, uh, for God so loved the world and gave his only begotten Son. You remember that, but actually in verse 19, it gets real interesting. In 19, it says, and this is the condemnation. That the light, talking about Jesus, has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And so a lot of times, you know, we say, well, I want, I want the light, I want Jesus to, to show and shine a path for me. I want to know where I need to go. But sometimes we just enjoy walking in darkness. Sin is like a black hole. I don't know if any of you remember studying astronomy and seeing black holes that, that, that just sucks all the life and the light out of it. And so that's how it is with, with sin in our lives. We, we begin to realize, you know what, that, that darkness just begins to try to overcome us. I went to a cave one time on the way to, uh, on the way to Gatlinburg, and, and many of y'all have been there before. I think it's called the Lost Sea. Anybody ever been there? I mean, if you've ever been to the Lost Sea, a really interesting thing. It's in a cave, but they've got an underground pond or lake or whatever it is, but they've got some fish swimming around there. Uh, but, uh, Mike, I think you can read the, the fish are blind, right? Uh, and the reason why those fish are blind is because they have swum in the darkness, swam in the darkness for so long that they, they lose their, their eyesight. They cannot see because of the darkness. And sometimes you and I are walking in so much darkness that we can't even see what's right in front of us. How many of you have been praying for someone that, you know, they would overcome an addiction, they make better choices in their life, or they would stop doing this, but, but it just seems like they, they cannot see the light. It just seems like they can't face reality. And what has happened? They've been in the darkness for so long that they've been blinded by their own darkness. Can, can I show you a contraption? Um, Terry, if you could pull that up. One of the worst things that I've ever seen in my whole entire life is, is this thing right here. It, it's, it, I found it in my mother's bathroom. I don't know if any of you have one of these things, but if you ever want to feel as though, you know what, I, I need a blow to my self-esteem, get you one of these bad boys. Uh, what this is, and guys, I know some of you, you know, you manicure your eyebrows and stuff, but you may not know as familiar with this thing as some of our ladies are, uh, but this was in my mother's bathroom. And so all of a sudden I look at it, it's like, ooh, it's a mirror, okay, I can handle that. But then I turn it to the other side, and when I turn it to the other side, all of a sudden it makes everything in your face explode to a bigger version of itself. Not only that, but then it's got this like, you know, fluorescent mirror or lights around this mirror that begins to show you things on your face that you didn't even know were there. If you ever get as close to my face as that mirror was on that day, I'm looking at my pores and I'm like, man, I need some of that tar stuff that they put on there. You know, I need to fix some of that. I began to look at some of the lines in my face that weren't anything. I didn't see those things beforehand, but all of a sudden I was like, I need some foundation. I need some base. I need some toner. I need something to cover up some of this stuff that's going 
oh, I did not see it to begin with, but the closer I got, I was like, is that a spot? Is that a wrinkle? Is what is my nose is crooked to like 30 degrees to one side? I did not see that. I know, I know you're looking at my nose now. Don't look, all right? But the, when I looked at that thing, all of a sudden, when the light came on, it magnified everything that was going on right in my face. Can I tell you, sir, there are times in your life that Jesus begins to turn on the, the light and show you some things in your life, and you begin to say, I, I don't think that was there, but it really is. I don't think I want to deal with that right now, but it's right there as clear as your face is. It's right in front of you. The lines, the wrinkles, the stains of your sin are right there. And so Jesus says that he is the one who is the light that disperses the darkness. There are no, there are no secret places in your life that you can hide away from the Lord. What if this morning, what if for just a moment, we were to take everything this past week that you said, everything that you did, everything that you thought, everything in your mind that you thought about someone nearby you even this morning, what if we were to take all of that hidden secret stuff in your life and just display it for all the world to see? Would you be glad someone did that this week? Would you be glad that person sitting next to you, kids, what you thought about your beloved parents this week, if they really knew everything that you thought, uh, you know, spouses, what you actually thought about your loved one this week when they didn't do the things that you asked them to do. Could you just imagine for a moment what it would be like in your life if all of that were displayed and out in the open? And I tell you, everything is displayed and out in the open for the Lord. He sees every single one of those things. And so light reveals darkness. This morning, if there are sins that you're holding on to in your life, you can't hide those from the Lord. He wants to deal with those this morning. He wants to shine the light. He is the light of the world. But not only does light disperse the darkness, but light actually leads us through the darkness. How many bad decisions and choices have you made in your life because you did not walk in the light of Christ? How many regrets and shames and when I wish I would have if, if you would have just walked in the light of Christ to begin with? Light leads us through the darkness. Some of you are wondering this morning, which way do I go? How do I make the best decision? What is the right decision? How, how can I see things more clearly? I'm not sure about this way or that way. I'm not sure exactly what I need to be doing in my life. I'm not sure of which way to take. The kids and I, whenever we travel somewhere, one of our favorite things to do is to see how many times we see this guy's face on the screen. Uh, anybody ever seen this guy's face on the screen? If you look and you ride across the highway, you will see his face. You know, you go between here and Biloxi, you go between here and Alabama, you go here. I mean, anywhere, Alexander Shunara's face is on like every billboard between here. I mean, you, you'll start looking for this guy's face from now on. And so that is our sign. You know, well, how many times can we see it? I'll, I'll tell kids. It actually gets on your nerves, doesn't it, Sylvie? You know, uh, I see Alex. There's Alexander Shunara. You know, so we just say his name over and over again because on the road there are all these signs along the highway. And sometimes in your life, you're looking for signs. God, would you give me a sign about this new decision I need to make? God, would you give me a sign about which way that I need to go in my life? God, it seems like I'm so confused, I'm so frustrated. Would you just give me a sign of which way I need to go in my life? You know, the, the Israelites, in the middle of their desert, in the middle of their darkest experience of their life, what did they do? They, they followed by day, a cloud of pillar by day, and a fire by, by night. And what happened? Whenever the fire would move, then they would follow the fire. Whenever the cloud would move, they'd follow the cloud. Wherever that would go, they would begin to say, that is my sign. Wherever it moves, that is where I need to go. And some of you, I know you're going through decision-making times in your life. You know, some of our graduates are about to uh, get into the next phase. You know, where do I go to school? What do I do? What about relationships? What about this? What about that? Which way do I go? Uh, what, what do I need to do about my job and my future and my family and these things? And you're wondering, you know what? It just seems like I'm a little bit confused, a little cloudy as to what decision I need to make. And we wish there were sometimes road signs that said, this is the way and this is the thing that you should do. That's not how it works with the Lord. The Lord says, you know what? I want you to know that I am your sign. I am your roadmap. You follow me, and then you won't walk in darkness. Then if you follow me, you won't have to worry about which road or decision. You just follow me, and I will shine light onto your path. Be careful, though. Be careful, because there are times in your life that you begin to follow the wrong light. You begin to follow the wrong advice. It's kind of like one of them bug lights. You ever seen those bug lights? It looks like it's light. It looks like it'll be safe. It looks like it won't harm you. But what does a bug light do? A bug light all of a sudden will take you. And what? It'll kill you. It looks like it'll be fun, but in the end, it'll destroy your life. 
And some of you have followed the wrong signs, the wrong roadmaps, the wrong lights in your life that you thought this would make me happy, this will fulfill me, but all of a sudden it leads to nothing else but death. And so be careful that you say, you know what, I want Jesus, the light of the world, to be the one that gives me life and light and light leads to my path and leads my way. Here's the third thing I thought of, that light gives, gives life. Biologically speaking, the sun is the source of all power here on Earth. You know, for something to grow, we need the light and the energy that's directed from the sun through photosynthesis, all those kind of things. All right, you know, so we can get that whole biological thing that you know about the sun and the power of the sun, all those kind of things. But when it comes to your spiritual life, when it comes to your real life, light is what gives real life. Light is what gave life to this woman who was caught in adultery. She was living in darkness, making wrong decisions, going the wrong way, but all of a sudden the light came and gave her life. Why? The Bible says, I'm the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have eternal life. Shall walk in the light of, of life. There is no life without Jesus. He says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of life. Now, Hannah, you just got down with finals, right? All right, so amen. Right, Brother Bill? Amen for that. Um, can I ask, I'm going to ask you a real, now, now you are in, in what, what is what is the uh, what is the name of the school? You're like in the graduate program? I mean, you know, so, so this is like undergrad is gone. I mean, we're, we're talking about like real school. What color, Miss Pharmacist Future, well, what color is an orange? Okay, so, so you'd agree, right? We've got a doctor in the building, so you'd agree that orange is orange. Now, what color is an orange in darkness or in black? Now, you would say it was orange, but the only reason why you would know it is orange, if I gave you in the middle of that cave, I gave you something that was shaped like an orange or felt like an orange, but you weren't quite sure, you really wouldn't know what color it was until the light shone on it. And that is how in many of your lives, you really don't experience true life until the light of Jesus Christ shines into your life. But you're missing out on the full spectrum of your life. You're missing out on what life could actually be. You're missing out on the growth of your life, the potential of your life, when you don't have the light of Jesus shining in your life. Everything needs light to show what it truly is. And so the Bible says that Jesus is the, the light of the world. Not only is he the light of the world, but he's delivered us. Colossians 1.13 says he's delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his Son. So I want to ask you just very simply today. Are you walking in darkness? For some of you, it means that you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. It means that if you die today, you'd be separated from God for all eternity. Why? Because you've never seen the light. You've never given your life to Christ. You've never realized, I'm a sinner. I need Jesus as my Savior. And I need Him to come into my life and change my life. And so some of you are still walking in darkness. Some of you are actually still enjoying your darkness. I like my sin. I like the, the feeling that I get from this thing and that thing that I know is wrong. I just want to continue to walk, walk in darkness. Some of you who are believers in Christ, there have been sins that you've held on to and you just continue to put that in that closet and hide it away and make sure nobody else sees it. But God sees that. There are no secret places with the Lord. He sees every one of those. And so he says, I, I am the, the, the light. I'm the light that gives life to you. I'm the light that, that shines its way in the middle of your darkness, in the middle of your confusion. And so the Bible says that we now to follow Jesus. There's only one way to have true light, to have true life. It is through Jesus Christ. And so that's the why the Bible says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness. And as some of y'all seen my cousin on, on a recent cartoon, uh, you may not know what that cartoon is, but, you know, The Rock is, is my cousin. I'm going to that as my cousin. You know, you may not see the resemblance, but every time I look in the mirror, even at my mother's house with that, that mirror right there, I'm like, you know what? I, I see you, buddy. I, I see you right there. I see The Rock. And then, so, you know, if you want to call me The Pebble, I'm okay with that um, because I'm not quite at rock status yet. But, but, but one of my favorite new cartoons, because it represents my peoples, is, uh, is Moana. You know, uh, have any of y'all seen Moana? Any, anyone? I mean, it, wasn't it like a, a biologic or, you know, it was like a, a, one of those, like, you know, living documentaries of, of all Asian Pacific Islanders? I know you love that movie. You had to love the movie because if I love the movie, then you had to love the movie as well. But in the middle of that movie, all of a sudden there's this girl and she will, you know, when the wind and the wind is and, you know, she's calling. And so, you know, she wanted to get out on the sea. So I, I met about 11 years ago, I met an aunt who was like a little Moana. 
Um, because what she would do is, is that she would get on an outrigger canoe with a couple of other Asian Pacific Islanders, and they would go, and they'd travel on an outrigger canoe, kind of like the one similar that you see on the screen. They'd get on this outrigger canoe, and when I saw her, I mean, she was like dated, like, like, like for real, for real, Hawaiian. You know, I'm like a half-breed, but she's like, you know, straight out of the ocean kind of Hawaiian. And, you know, she had like four teeth. Two like here and then two up here. Nothing in the middle. Um, she was she was she was a, a, a strong woman. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the best description of my auntie. Um, but you know, she 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 was what you would picture a toothless Hawaiian woman to look like. Uh, and so all of a sudden, that she would tell us these stories. Uh, how about they would get on this outrigger canoe and they'd go from Hawaii to Fiji, be out on the ocean a couple months, they'd have to collect rainwater, they'd go fishing, you know, I mean, she was out there in the middle of the ocean, in the middle of stormy weather, in the middle of the sun beating down on them, in the middle of all of this kind of, you know, craziness for months, and they're just on a canoe, about seven or eight of them are on a canoe going from Hawaii all the way to Fiji to trace back the, the lineage of where they came from. So we began to ask her questions about these experiences, about these travels that she would have, and this is what she would tell us, is that the way that they would not lose course, the way that they'd make sure that they'd get there in a proper manner, the way that they would make sure that they would know where they are in the middle of the ocean, is that they would look up and they could be able to follow the lights. So she began to say, well, this star is here, and this is here, and at this certain time of the year, this is there. And so she could tell me everything. Why? Because the stars, the light, helped her to navigate through the, the winds and the waves and the storms and everything that was calling her out to the ocean. But at nighttime, she could follow the light. During the day, she had the sun to light her way as well, and she knew exactly where she needed to be out in the middle of the ocean because she followed the light. For some of you today... It is stormy, stormy weather. For some of you today, it doesn't feel as though what, that, that I'm really living in the life, the fullness of life that it seems like I ought to have. For some of you, you have lost your way. You have gone to places that you never wanted to go. You can't figure out how to get back on course. It just seems as though there's a tidal wave of emotions and stuff that is going on in your life. And it just seems as though you're one moment away from capsizing and going into the utter darkness of despair and depression and loneliness and hopelessness. And you just seem as though your life is rocking one way to the other. And I encourage you today the same words that my Hawaiian auntie told me then, that she followed the lights and the light led her path. And friends, today Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And he who follows me no longer needs to walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus, you, light of my you blah 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 blah. You blah blah blah. I don't know the song. Connie, you could probably fill in the words. But if anyone had ever liked your world, it would be Jesus. And today, would you follow him? Today, would you bow before him? Today, would you just come to him and let him light you path? Would you bow with me this morning as Brother Wayland comes? And as our heads are bowed this morning, friends, can I ask you this morning, are you wandering far from the light? Are you following lights that no longer work, chasing after the flashing blue light of success or whatever, and then you find that it has nothing else to, to do but to just destroy your life? Today, Jesus is the only light. He is the only only life and he is the only way to find true hope and fulfillment and peace friends thank you for joining us today at west side emmanuel baptist church the church that loves god and loves people we hope you'll be able to join us this coming sunday at 10 30 a.m or six o'clock in the evening time wednesdays at six o'clock for our prayer service and we also have youth and children's activities as well we look forward to seeing you hope to meet you in person here in bogalusa with bogalusa on our heart we hope to see you soon Ooh. Mm -hmm.